Light me up, don't you stop Cause tonight, it's on the line Show me how, you get on down Close my eyes, take me for a ride Hey guys and welcome back to my channel I've just realised that I've left the car door open and the boot open Standard sort of vlog, starting it at mum's, at the ponies but we are not going with the ponies. The suitcases are over there. We've uh, come here to drop Nala off, which I have to say, I'm a little bit sad about leaving you. Are we gonna have tears? Mm. <laughs> I could, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a no, bit like I a worried mum, but she is in the best hands. She's staying down at mum's for the day. Then Chris is gonna pick her up after work and then drop her back tomorrow. So we've dropped her here and then mum is very kindly dropping us down to the train station where we are catching the train up to the big smoke. Thought I would just start it here and keep it very in keeping with probably every other vlog that I ever put out. We'll talk more of the reasons why we're off to the big smoke. It's only a couple of days, we're back again tomorrow, but we are basically going up and following a day in the life of a racehorse ahead of a very exciting week in September that you guys can get involved with. There is a hundred yards opening their doors, their gates, their yards for you guys to go and experience it yourself. Have a look behind the scenes. But as I say, I will talk more about that as the trip unfolds. But for now, let's go get the train. Let's not miss the train. Not miss the train because it's not like us on a standard standard trip where we can be like, oh, we're five, ten minutes late. Oh, we just won't stop there. Oh, we'll stop. we won't <laughs> yeah. stop for so long. So, uh, yeah, we are on a bit of a tight deadline, but... Yeah, Mummy D is dropping us down to the train station. We're in the hands of the choo-choo driver. We are, we are. But we're in, we're in the right for time. It's when you hear the train go past here and then you panic. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Stop down yeah. there, please, mate. <laughs> yeah, just pick us up from here. But yes, let's go catch this train. Reading. The train stopped at a good place. It did stop at a good place because this is literally the station is right behind us. You've got an SD card. My I haven't got my yeah, I haven't got my head strap and I don't know whether to go walking for it or not. I have got trainers on. on, I could go running. Could leave you here. You can get another drink and I'll go running. I'm quite happy. What are you on about? <laughs> Oh, so we're just having some nachos. I am very pleased that I didn't go for the sharer. I almost did because I was worried that they were going to be small, but I've gone for a piece of chili and actually that salsa looks absolutely amazing. Proper mm. fresh. Yum, yum. So yeah, we've got two more trains to catch. We've got one at 10 past two. It's currently about five to two. We're not so, going to rush. The girls haven't left home yet. No, it may going <laughs> to take like three hours or something to get there. <laughs> Two and a half. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to get there till about six. So actually, even if we get the three o'clock train, we will still get in at half past four. I don't know how far it is from the train station. Not uh, about five minutes, I think. Reason. How is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Mm. So a nice walk, quick walk, and we'll be there before. Sorry, this is yeah. breakfast and lunch. So I'm tapping straight. In. Yeah, I know. I'm being very good and waiting. But, uh, yeah, not going to wait any longer, and we'll see you back on the train. Did you get a bit stuck? You just filmed me! <laughs> Because you, you missed your ticket. I don't know which way we're going. So, 
Here we are, as you can see, we have arrived at Epsom. So we are now, let's just pull, let's pull that down now, we're out the station and out in the open. Yeah, we've got a five minute walk, we don't know what direction we're going. To the Holiday Inn where they have kindly booked for us. I still haven't gone into much detail about this, but today is obviously travel day and I need to look up which way we're going. So. We'll go into detail when we get to the hotel. hotel. And got more battery on phones, because as you can imagine, a long old journey day. We've been on our phones a lot and battery is already very low. Change your plan, put the postcode in. It's not a five minute walk, it's a 35 minute walk. So we're just gonna go over and we're gonna, we're gonna get a taxi instead. Not sure you're gonna be able to read that sign, but it says, welcome to the race course stables home of the greatest okay. flat race in the world. Okay, my eyes can't read that. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our hotel. Almost there. Very pleased that we didn't walk and we got a taxi. Oh, Absolutely. is that where we're going tomorrow? To the Everett Stables? Uh, can't remember the name. Pretty sure it was. Was it? They did say it was in walking distance. Yeah. I'll take that as walking distance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our names. Under our names. Oh, okay. We are here. Emily, don't stop. Where are we Why would we have to go downstairs? We've just come up a lift. <laughs> Staircases to access third and second floors and fire exit only. R 201 to 280, but 203 is that way. Have we gone left? We should have gone left. We travel all the way from Cornwall, but in the hotel we can't find our okay, well, <laughs> room. You followed me to be fair, I'll take the blame for that. I thought it was to be fair, I did, I did look and think, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, see, we're going bigger now. numbers now, this is 2.20. Oh, have we gone straight past? Yeah. Shut up. Right, so what number, what number are we? 2.2? Two, two. Yeah, it's not on there. 2.2.2. Two, two, two. Oh, no, okay, fair. Oh, right there. <laughs> I'm right next door to each other. Oh, yeah, we are right next to each other. Literally. Uh, How funny. Woohoo! Arrive. Oh, that's comfy bed. Very comfy bed. I don't know whether she'll be able to hear me or not through the door. I feel like you want to knock. Oh, maybe not if you can't hear me. Yeah, it's nice to just go. Chill. A certainly oh, famous popular program. TV program. Also, also our academy. He's a he's quite a good presenter now on ITV Racing. So that is probably why he's there. Yeah, funny that. Uh, eight forty-five to eight thirty. Yard walkthrough. Set up the briefing for probably not us. Um, eight thirty. Media arrival. Meet and greet. So that's us. We do meet and greet. Wow. Hey, yeah. Signing. More famous. Yeah. Than Chris. He'll be running up. <laughs> 8.45 to 9.15, breakfast and engage with media. Ooh. Oh, nice. 9.15 to 10. Good morning. Today is the day I have decided, to, I woke up and I was like, yeah, I will get up. I set my alarm in case and I actually woke up before it and I was like, I'm going to use that as a sign. Yesterday, I fancied going for a run. I didn't quite make it once everybody arrived. Lucy, Meg, Ree, G, we went out for dinner and yeah, it was a really lovely evening just chatting the night away darkness just surrounded us and we were like oh crikey it's actually quite late absolutely lovely evening and i then decided this morning i would get up and go for a run now i'm not gonna lie that is a lot more of a hill than you think and i just started on that bit um and i just stopped here because i'm like can i run up there or should i run that way i think that's more of a designated path so i'm gonna run that way and then just do a big loop around. Basically just following at the race course around, to be honest. Code of conduct. Epson and Walton Downs race horse training grounds. And like, yeah, you have pedestrians, dog walkers, runners, cyclists, hackers, and right in the middle, danger. Race horses traveling at speed during training times. I've never been to the races. So even just to see like all the white fencing like you do when you see it on the telly, it's just, yeah, epic. And I am so, so excited for today. I've already learned so much about the racehorse racing and I can't wait to actually go see it and learn even more. Of course, 
going to let you guys learn along with me. I'm going to carry on my run and then I will explain everything about what is happening today. Run complete. I only ran about 3k, didn't run very far. I tried to be a little bit quicker than I would normally. Now it's time and I've got loads of time to get ready. <laughs> Almost made a wrong turn, but it's okay. You stressed oh. me in the car, Em? <laughs> Asking no. me questions. No, 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 because you're just getting it in my head. I just want to make sure that I'm saying everything right. Oh, mirror. Yeah, so this is Clear Height Stables, where we are here for the press day. Oh, there's some gates over there. It is very exciting, but we're on time. Which I'm gonna, not going to lie, I don't think we're going to be yes, on time. <laughs> Oh, but three thank minutes early. It's yay. Not like me. Thankfully, it is very, very close to the hotel. So, uh, yeah, we will get out and then I will finally explain to you guys exactly what today entails. It's obviously. Can you do that on my vlog too. <laughs> it's obviously all just been travelling like it is from Cornwall. And there's Re. And I'm guessing this is the first lot that have already been out to the gallops for their morning work. But we will obviously find out a lot more about that when we get to go and watch them. Another one there just coming in. So what today is all about guys is we're gonna witness a day in the life of a racehorse, all in preparation for National Racehorse Week, which is from the 12th to the 19th of September this year, where over a hundred trainers yards and even more yet, some are still yet to confirm, where you guys can go and witness all of this for your very own eyes and see just how much these racehorses are treated like kings and queens. Obviously, we're gonna be showing you a bit today, but like I say, go and have a look in the flesh for yourself. Tickets are actually free. I repeat, they are free. I will pop the address on screen here and down below, but you just need to type in your postcode, find out where your local yard is, and you could be going and visiting and having a look around a racing yard just like we are today and as I say seeing the day in the life of a racehorse so we're going to be seeing them worked washed off in a sand pit and uh, yeah I've got to be honest I am an absolute total newbie when it comes to racing I don't have much I don't have any involvement but my mum did have an ex-racehorse who she had for 31 years lived till it was 35 she got it her when she was a four-year-old so I'm actually quite intrigued to maybe get my mum to speak a little bit more about that when we actually attend a yard we need to find out which one is our closest so we will be going onto the website typing our postcode and finding which one is the closest to us and tina and i are thinking that we're going to take our mummies along for the day and yeah maybe i can get a little bit more info about mum's horse then but yeah that is pretty much all i know i don't know about the races the classes what they're really called what training they do today we're actually at simon dow's yard which as you can see is up at epsom and we will be having a look around and we are going to be shown around by the one and only chris hughes which you might know more from love island i'm hoping that he's going to do a cheeky little rap for me but no he is very involved and absolutely loves racing so he is going to be showing us around today you know i think it's quite an interesting point play, place to start is the uh, lifestyle of racehorses is extremely important to people like me and Karen and Tracy and everybody who's involved and lives and works with them. Being in horse racing is a little bit like being in the circus. It's a way of life as opposed to a career choice or a life choice and it unfortunately consumes absolutely everything that you do and think about and the horses become an extension of our family and um, just been speaking to to uh, one client who's you know who wants to put his horse in the sales that actually makes you feel just inside it's like selling the dog you know maybe a smelly dog but at the same time <laughs> it still feels like selling the dog and um, so one of my many uh, little sayings is that uh, when you think you've had your best day you can be pretty sure there's a better one coming but sadly the same applies to when you think you've had your worst day so it's a real true roller coaster and lots of ups and downs. It's a great journey if you can hang on. It's like Marmite, it doesn't suit everybody. Mm -hmm. And as I say, from an owner's perspective, um, you know, amazingly brave to be able to spend that or be prepared to spend that sort of money and throw that sort of commitment and that sort of uh, emotion into it. And uh, you know, the owners become 
they become part of our extended family, you know, the people who are with the horses, you know, you're the first person who gets asked to uh, dinner after the immediate family is normally the racehorse trainer, and not because they like him, because they want to hear about the bloody horse. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, I'll leave it to you, well done. Yeah, no, um, thanks guys, obviously looking forward to it. Good to showcase National Racehorse Week, it's going to be, it's going to be an amazing week. Great for like, obviously people like yourself, let him, let him, the general public into race courses to help break that perception. Obviously, there's so many people I've learned just over the last four years of having a platform myself to actually have an opinion on whether it's mental health stuff, whether it's like the BBC documentary I did on testicular cancer and raising awareness. Like, it's the same applies for race horses. Like, I know the levels of care from like an early age, but not everybody does. So, to have the general public come down and for people just to come in, change their perception, hopefully, if they've got any negative opinions on how race horses are looked after, is a great thing. So, Good work, Great British Racing. It's a great mm -hmm. initiative, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll go have some fun, won't we? Sounds good. Sounds good. Vlog City. Yeah. 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 Beat the breeze. He's a he's a uh, five ton winner. He's a lower grade horse than this, but nevertheless, he's a regular runner. Can I come and say hello? <laughs> they have a routine. Horses yeah. are creatures of habit. They like to do the same thing day after day after day. And um, so they like to exercise at the same time. They like to go to the same track. Most of the good top trainers, top riders will, will, will tell you uh, there's a hundred ways to train racehorses. All of them are right. Some are better than others. But the most important thing is consistency. You've got to do the same thing day after day after day after day. Obviously, you, you know, you'll know you have your slow days and your fast days. Oh, sure. Uh, so Sean learned to ride a year ago and he's riding in the charity race at Newbury. <laughs> Trust you to go for the chestnut. I know, I didn't see it. I was just saying how lovely it is that they've all nearly nearly all of them have got two windows, so they've got like their stable door and a window to look out of as well. Got a change of view. And I like the flame. You're my Beat at absolutely everything. So if you can imagine the, the strut, where that foot is going to be when the horse is galloping, and he's going to land half a ton of body weight onto one of those tiny little limbs. The the the, the um, proportion is: imagine walking on your thumbs and your big toes, and walking like that in a four pace gait. That's the same strain that's going down onto those limbs. So it's an amazing amount of weight on very, very delicate Literally. structures. And so therefore, the confirmation of how the horse is, is going to be everything. This is going to put, pick his leg up so you can see the shoe underneath. So nice very, clean shoe, that. Good clean shoe, very important. The heels, heels are everything. And the foot shape is everything. So the, the shoe should come just to the edge of where the heel turns the foot is properly supported. And when this horse's pedal bone, which is just here, in the middle of his foot, when that lands, that must be in rhythm with everything that goes on in here. So you can imagine the number of strides he's going to take in his life at speed after, over a period of time, a bit like if you've got um, the uh, suspension not right in the car, the shock absorbers start to wear out. Yeah. The tires start to wear out. So how he's landing and what his foot shape is and what happens to his limbs during his period of being in training is vitally important to us. And it's going to dictate to me and to the client and the owner and to the horse, of course, the length of his career and indeed how successful he then might be. How often do you have the farrier in? So for the young horses, the young horses would require farrier every three to four weeks. With a racehorse like him, he would get shod every month. Yeah. 
but you tried to put the lighter shoes on him, aluminium plates, he's got <coughs> steel shoes on at the moment, but you put the aluminium plates on him to race. The old days, the practice was plates off the next day. Nowadays, we're in, because they're much stronger yeah. um, made, we, we keep them on until they uh, until they need reshoeing. You don't really do that. Oh, that's lovely. So this is Laura. <laughs> And I spied all of these buckets from over there and I was like, wow. Right. So you prefer all the feed? Well, Simon think... makes the feeds up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, so like these ones will be for the two-year-olds. They come in. Yeah. Oh, these ones are like the two-year-olds, so it's like a different mix compared to what the older horses are getting. Okie doke. Simon was mentioning earlier that they tend to like trickle wheat. Like yes. they don't. They, they just browse through the browse day through type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so is it only what, it's more than one feed a day, I would have thought? Yes, yeah. you have. So Simon will get up at like four in the morning, for example, wow. and give them like a scoop each. Yeah. Then they'll have what this would be like their brunch, breakfast, brunch, lunch yes. type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then they will get another Do they all get excited for feed? Like Definitely Corazon. Oh, there's okay. a few of them that give you a good whinny. Oh, they do. lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they have one again in the evening for evening stables. So yes. like half, I would say five-ish, ten past oh, five-ish when we finish the stables. Finish the stables, yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I keep on top. I see all the numbers are on the bucket, so that's all the number of the stables, right? Yeah, we're at 28 we have. So 28 in at the moment. Yeah, that side as well. Yeah. Oh, and we've basically feed. Uh, yeah. Amazing. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Not a problem. Thank you. So what, how long is your, ten, your day tend to um, be? From probably about quarter to six. We start at six, but okay, I about quarter to six. Yeah. And then till 12. Till 12. And then you come back at four. And finish about half five. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. us. Oh. <laughs> oh, and is that the second lot that have been out on the Galax this morning? No, that no. is the fourth lot. That's the fourth We've lot. We've got a far, <laughs> another lot to go, maybe another lot after that. So oh, between, wow. Between five and six recently. Cool. So is it all the same jockeys, I take it, and then they just get off one? And yeah, yeah get same off one, people. get on the other one. And poor George is getting all banters. Oh. Banner, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, this is my stable, this is my home, what's going on? Well, we keep trying to turn them to be oh. birthday, you see. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
down there. I guess there's probably a lot of other trainers around this area as well that all come up and train here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Epsom Downs here. Epsom and Walton Downs make up the training grounds. There's so three artificial tracks. Five thousand metre fibre sand track here, which we're on this morning. Beyond on Walton Downs, there's that seven furlong, fourteen hundred metre poly track, which is the same as Lingfield and Chelmsford. And um, then right at the bottom of Six Mile Hill, there's a uh, nine furlong, mile one furlong. Um, 1800 meter Mac track, which is very stiff with a big uphill finish. As well, we have uh, about 65 miles of grass canters and gallops. So, nice. this what you're standing in is a bad example of a grass canter, but uh, as I say, it's the sort of thing that gets used much more in the winter. Epsom's on chalk, where we stand here, or just up there on top of the race course. We'll have a look down the track when we go back. This is the highest point on the downs, it's also the same height as the top of the post office tower. Yeah. That was an interesting, uh, so we're, we're, we're quite, we're high, we're high. And I'm like a, I'm a teacher watching his children or a, a football coach watching his players. And so we're looking for stride length, yep. comfortability of action. Uh, we're looking for noise, we're all listening for noise, particularly inspiratory noise. Big difference between expiratory and inspiratory noise. Inspiratory noise is an indicator of things going wrong in the upper respiratory tract, which is Know, boring, 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 but it's uh, it's like we were saying, seeing with that horse this morning with the, yeah. with the dirty nose, and also can of course be the sign of an oncoming, uh, you know, debilitating respiratory condition, which can just be a, like a little light cold, but has because of the enormous gaseous exchange that's going on through the nostril with a racehorse with every stride, it's significantly important. Whereas with the human athlete or a hound or something like this, it's a point matters. Yeah. Do you um, ever do like heart rate monitors, measure recovery time and yeah, things like that? that? So we want to, so a horse's resting rate is somewhere between 30 and 60. My job as a horse trainer is to get the horse's galloping heart rate up to 240 beats for at least 400 meters. And so that's done in a structured way. Every trainer does it differently. Uh, coming up here, depending on the type of horse, we're going to be going somewhere between 30 and 40 kilometres an hour, which is a warm-up canter, bowling canter, it's almost as fast as the horse can canter, but it's a bowling canter, and you'd expect their heart rate to be, for the minute and 20 seconds it takes them to get up there, you want their heart rate to be about 180, something like that. This is Mungo's Quest, he's a, he's a four-year-old horse, he was third up here at Epsom last week, and these are two two-year-olds. A little colt uh, gelding by Cable Bay, unraced. So they're still gaining a bit of experience then? Yeah, really a gold, second filly, quite a nice filly. She made her debut at Epsom last uh, week before last. I've been wanting to ask you a question. Go on. I want. <laughs> God, what was it, Meg? I've forgotten already. Spits and bars. Hey? Oh, About. Oh, no. the mood is a little low. Yeah, the mood is oh, a little low. Yeah, we basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of you know that meme keeps like, that means. That um, meme's everywhere. Just, just keep, just just doesn't doesn't die. I don't know. Are we going but to the bar? No, we're going to the bar. Oh, I thought we were going to the bar. We're not going to the bar, then. It's very wavy. I thought we were going for drinks. We're not going to the bar, then. Oh, the bar, bar for drinks. I was the same way in that bar. Not yet. Are you able to make a wrap about National Horse Race Week? Oh, National Race Horse Week. Oh, God, National, Horse Race Week. National Horse Week. What we got? <laughs> National Race well, Horse Week. Think, think, just think on the spot. National Race Horse Week. What rounds a week? Ooh. You got to think. Do we need beak? Beak. Mm. Oh, it gives you the National National opportunity to speak. Bleak. Opportunity. Creek. Opportunity. Yeah, opportunity to speak about. Anyway, check out Ems Vlog for the rap on press. On fleek. Yeah. Um. Give him time, Em, give him time. Yeah, do you want a, do you want a little think. while and I'll come back to you later? Yeah, I'm actually retired. You're actually brother. looking a little bit. <laughs> You're not retired. Bit <laughs> a little bit stressed there, Chris. You're right. I'm trying to come out, I can't write no, but you know, It's all right, I'll give you a little I've got an, an A star in English, English language, so I shouldn't really An A star? Wow. Yeah, I bet you or you got an A star. Just, yeah, yeah, no, I got a B, B actually. Yeah. 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 I was A. I was more maths than I was English. Oh, really? That's the reason I've just said accounting. Yeah, exactly. Now that's good though. A Percy pig. Percy pig. I love a Percy pig. See? Yes, please. A little bit of Percy pig. Meg won sponsorship. Oink, oink. M&S. You can tell that they just love their job as well. They love it, yeah.
<laughs> natural oh, curl. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, so I had the GHD wand on this morning. <laughs> this one gets this like a one free. Need it. Yes. <laughs> so, Ray, as because you were the reason that we're here today, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I what is your involvement? So, my involvement. I work for the Racing Foundation, um, which is a charitable foundation in racing, and we fund all sorts of things. And um, and we're part funding National Racehorse Week, yeah. so it's great. So this being is the here. first year of that, isn't it? Yeah, it's yes. our pilot year, so we're really hoping this sort of extends and it becomes like a big annual celebration in the calendar, in the horsey calendar, in the horsey calendar. Yes. Everyone is excited every year to go yeah. to their local yard and meet these lovely, these lovely creatures. horses. Yeah, these greedy are. creatures. Yes, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just such a, it's such a great uh, it's been a great press day today and we're yeah. so excited for the event in september yeah. Yeah. i am anyway right. yeah definitely <laughs> which is your local yard which one will you be going so, to so evan williams is my local yard okay. i put my um, postcode in the postcode finder on the website and um i explained about that all at the beginning but there will be more super, on that <laughs> yeah so and um, amazingly enough the the local yard opening um closest to me is in the same village as where I keep oh my, my horses goodness, yeah so that'll be such great fun at Evan Williams's yard and he's had some fantastic winners recently so oh. it'd be really nice to get up close person. and personal with like yeah. equine celebs oh um, nice and yeah just see the day-to-day -day because you yeah. see their successes and yeah but you don't see the behind the scenes oh, like, and it's like this I can't there? believe how Simon and all everyone Laura everyone is just so passionate about yeah. the horses and you can just tell it because I'll be honest, they don't shut up. They just keep talking yeah, and talking. I know, I know. Because they just, they know everything about each different horse. Yeah, they do, amazing. don't they? Not yeah. calling shut up is the right word. But I know. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like, true, isn't it? And you just like ended up, I've been recording like minutes and minutes just because I'm mesmerised by what they're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. they absolutely do. Like we do in eventing. Yes. Because yeah. I've got horses myself that I event and play polo cross on and obviously I absolutely dote on them. And we can talk to our horsey friends forever and ever yeah. about our horses yeah and like we did exactly last night like, dinner yes exactly and um Hello. but what's really nice is that it's the same in racing isn't yes. it they're yeah, exactly absolutely. equally as sort of obsessed absolutely. with them and uh sport rotten yeah Very and now loved. i've got some questions for simon and chris in a Super. second that have come through on instagram so we uh, will go and ask them right here you go <laughs> how often do they race I think it depends on how they come out of the race. Oh, okay. Yeah, because some can run, be run quickly because they quite enjoy it. Yes. And they have a little time away little and then come back. Others need a little bit longer in between depending on how they recover after the race. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It varies. Right, yeah. yeah. And just assess them, like you say, as they come out and then, yeah, then yeah, work a plan from then. Yeah, just like you do your athletes in football. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I have asked if my Instagram followers to ask some questions for yourself and for Simon. Yep. So we're going to start with yourself. Yep. Um, so you did touch on it a little bit at the beginning and when it all started today, but what is your connection? How did you get into racing and role that you are in? Yeah, my initial connection to racing, I had two ponies when I was growing up. I used to go to pony club and do all that kind of thing when I was younger. When I was about 10 years old, I had two ponies. They were both kept at a point-to-point -point yard in Norton, which is about 10 minutes from where my family home was in the Cotswolds. And they were, and part of the country. Yeah, when I was part of the country, my like, way of keeping my horses was to ride out the pointers, um, keep them fit, muck them out, do all the kind of standard stuff you do at a yard. And yeah. that was kind of like my little way into horse racing, my connection with thoroughbreds from an early age. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So about 10, yeah. But you said the pony club, so you have done some other things other than racing? Do you do any dressage or jump? No, I didn't. Jumping? I obviously, within pony club, you like, you jump jump the poles you do a little bit of show yeah. jumping and that kind of yeah. thing and so i had fun with that i did pony i only did pony club for about two years okay i was a lot young yeah a lot when i was did a lot younger but now? no racing was kind of just the route i went it was just kind of like horse racing and nothing else in terms of like equestrian sports yeah. and i absolutely love them they're and great they are they are gorgeous oh that one's got some uh water markers on the back Lovely. That one's been doing dressage. <laughs> Lovely looking animal. Um, and have you actually raced yourself? I rode in a charity race oh, okay. in York on 5th of 12. I was on a Richard Fahey trained horse, so I rode up there for about three months. And uh, 
absolutely love soft ground. It was probably the hardest ground. They, they still oh like, no! They still like, you know when you still got the footings of a, of, a, of a hoof in the ground from the meeting before. That's how hard it was. There'd been no rain in York for a while. So oh. amazing race course. Like just to ride that race course was a bit of a pleasure. Oh, Got some smooching going on behind you. And what would you say? Another question that came in was, what is your favourite venue? Favourite venue, so my favourite flat venue would be York. I absolutely love it. I think they're doing loads there. William Darby's the guy who actually runs the race course and he's doing a lot of little initiatives himself in terms of getting race goers in younger generation in terms of like easing up dress code and stuff, which I think is great. And my favourite champs venue is Cheltenham. I live in the Cotswolds. Cheltenham is like the pinnacle. It's the absolute pinnacle. It's the best. We have the Gold Cup. Oh, Aintree's great fun time because of the locals. Oh. There's so many great race courses which people should visit and just have a day out. So much fun. Definitely. I am yet to actually have a day at the racing. What? I know, I'm a total utter <laughs> oh, really? newbie with like... She hinted for a oh, day. You need to go, you need to go, you need to go, Angel. Go, Chris, ask her. Ask her a race. Ask you one. Right. For a race. For a race. <laughs> Can we take you to a race, Mia? Oh, I'd love for you to. I'll take you to a race, Mia. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. All right. Okay. And then finally, you I have a nice show for there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a date. I am uh, there. Just give me the date. Right. Um, can, can I be her chaperone? Because she needs I, taken care of. You know what, Joy? We can all, we can all go. Probably go. Probably Brilliant. Have another three come with me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, Get unfortunately, we come as a four. Yes. Yeah. Um, and lastly, I did give you some warning. Have you got a rat? Oh, my arm. Oh! Rapper, right? You want a national race or sweet rap? Yeah. I ain't got anything to sleep. I'm a favourite. Hey, oh, I mean, Meg still owes us a poem, so. Look at this, look at this quick. Oh, a bit of Pilates <laughs> going on in there. Yes, Trying to take the distraction off. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair. I'm well on the spot, yeah? He's offered you a day at the races so yeah, we can prepare that, it for oh, then. That levels the plane. No, yeah. I think you can just prepare your wrap for then. Oh, yeah, all right. All right, give me a few months. Challenge on. Yes, then. My job done. Perfect. I've got weed my way out of that one. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you very much. It's good to see you all up here. It's good. Yeah, it's been good fun. It's good. It's good. Uh, definitely yeah. Yeah. No, it's, this is cool, yeah. I'm a bit nice. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, excellent. Well done, girls. Thank you. 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 Oh, did you drop it? Ready? This one here is owned by Harry Redknapp. Not very pretty. Gorgeous. So as we have quite clearly seen all Everyone around this yard are so passionate about each and every one of the horses. And this is what the idea of the National Racehorse Week is to show the welfare of these horses. They are treated like kings and queens. They are so loved, just like we love our own. And they just know about each, each one. And it's just so clear to see from the way that they talk and the words and the way that they act with the horses, their real true love and passion for racing and the most wonderful horses that, uh, that we have seen here today. This is her, what she says, is the last one she's going to have. Uh, we all say that, don't we? The last. No, we still don't learn. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, so that was just a good luck message from uh, from the horse to the owner. Oh, that was lovely. Well, I think we've all become through lockdown. We've all become amazing film directors, haven't we? We have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're can. not wrong. Let's take pictures of things yeah. and then send it on to people who can't be there. So this one is racing tonight? He races at 5 to 4 this afternoon. Oh, 5 to 4 this afternoon. In, uh, at Lingfield. Yeah. He's got one of the best riders in the world at the moment riding him, Machine Murphy. Oh, Normally okay. he's, uh, he's ridden by an apprentice, Tyler Hurd, but Tyler's banned today. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we've gone for best available and yeah. uh, we can't do better than Machine Murphy. Ah, fantastic. Oh, well. drawn, drawn two of eight which is quite a good draw, a number from the inside out. Inside out. So he's uh, effectively on the inside, but at Lingfield they very often race from the opposite side. So we'll have to see uh, how, uh, how it works out for him. But in the second last stop, loves the soft ground. One over six furlongs and soft ground, and today he's got six furlongs and soft ground. Six furlongs and... Ah. A little bit too heavy for him. A slow ground. You can just put your hand on his head quite a bit. And for me, who is like very new to the, all this racing lingo if i'm being totally honest Hello. you said it earlier when the horses were on the gallops but how long is a furlong oh, 200 meters furlong is 200 meters yeah. ah okay so there's, 
eight furlongs in a mile. Okay. And, uh, and the, sort of they vary the distance right from five furlongs, so that's a thousand meters, right up to 3,200 meters plus. So the, the majority of the longer distance races are more, there's not as many of them. Okay. And what's this one called, sorry? It's called Moosley. Moosley. Oh, well, very best of luck, Moosley, for later on. <laughs> So now it's Simon's turn for the questions that I asked Instagram earlier. Oh, I'm going funny colour on here. <laughs> um, so one of the questions is how often, how many days off a week does a horse genuinely get? I guess they're all going to vary on the individual, but is there a typical? Race horse Sundays are a quiet day. So um, Sunday, we, the guys come in at seven, finish at nine, again, four o'clock till till uh, half past five. So effectively what that means is that a racehorse on a Sunday has a quiet day. Okay. Uh, so he can probably go on the walker for 20 minutes, maybe go out in the pen, maybe go out in the paddock. Yeah. If they were racing early in the week, then they would, they would, they would the early in the week, then they'll train. Mm -hmm. And if they have a day or two days off after each race, depending on the type of race they have. And sort yes, of Laura was saying that yeah. and about how they recover and yeah. things like yeah. that. Yeah, what they recover is like. So. What is a typical season for a horse because like i'm i'm an eventer yeah. so obviously it runs more of the summer months and yeah. then not so much over the winter but is there it depends really i mean historically and before all weather track racing so when we raced on turf only yes uh historically there was clearly demarked seasons so national hunt racing over jumps was through the winter and flat racing was for nine months of the summer months yeah. but now with the advent of all weather racing and night racing and floodlit tracks etc etc yes of course there isn't specifically a demarked season but um, i suppose the seasons are naturally demarked by the classic races so historically a young three-year-old reached maturity and midway through his third year now in 2020 i think the breed take longer to mature okay. so um it's all Gone to pieces. Please carry on. Don't ask it. Um, so <laughs> Show press well and truly underway. <laughs> it's, all changed, it's all changed quite a bit, but um, but I think uh, you could say really the flat season is April until the end of October, and the national hunt season is October until mid-April. Mid but but they race all year, both disciplines. Yes. Yeah. So another question was, I know that you talked about like the shearing is one of the most important parts of the racehorse, but also what other, do they have supplements in their feed to help their joints and things like yeah, that? Because I think that's probably one of the most conceptions, isn't, conceptions with racing, isn't it? About the horse's joints and things like that. So what other things are put, in, like measures are put in place? Well, I think the... you, there's plenty of, of conventional supplements that you can use on horses, but it's a little bit like athletes. Uh, you know, so long as your diet is essentially good and you're eating properly and healthy balanced. things and it's balanced, <laughs> yeah. then, uh, you know, there's no need to force additional supplements into a horse. Okay. And I think, that, you know, most trainers who've been doing it for a period of time will go on what results show from having, from feeding certain things or how the horse feels. Yeah. Yeah. Same with people. If the horse feels really good inside mm. and he has a headache, He'll cope, and people are the same, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. If people are in good shape in themselves, and uh, and not too much knocks them off their stride, but you want the horse to come out of the, you want the racehorse to come out feeling a little bit squealy, a little bit lively, mm -hmm. full of energy. Whereas with so many of the equine disciplines, you need quite a disciplined horse. With a racehorse, you want to have frivolous. Okay. Yes. Yeah. With a little yeah. bit of freshness, a little bit yeah. of an edge to him, so that he thinks, can't wait to race. Got a bit of sparkle. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And do these horses have like a retirement plan? What sort of age did they retire? I guess that again, is it all based on individual? Depends individual? how their careers go, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's not too many flat race horses that, get, that, that keep, stay speedy enough or have enough alacrity or athleticism okay. to go on beyond sort of six, seven, eight years old. Uh, national hunt horses tend to start later and then their careers go on maybe for longer because they're operating at not maximum stride length for all of the race. Yeah. And it's the same applies to the training. A horse is going maximum stride length every day in his training because that's the regime that he needs in order to race successfully. He's going to load himself in a, in a way which may prevent his stride being quite as long later on. So once that happens, then it's time for them to 
to a slower discipline. That doesn't mean that it won't be as exacting or it won't doesn't mean that they might not retain the same athleticism. Yeah. But the stride length is something that the racehorse needs. Oh, okay, amazing. And then like retirement? Retirement, well, retirement normally comes quite a bit after. So most racehorses have another, have a second life. Yes. So they go on and do other things. So like ROR classes ROR, and things. Absolutely, or they, you know, they make nice hunters and people take them eventing and show yes. jumping yep. and they have them as uh, companions and all sorts of different things. So yep. they, there's a lot of them play polo very well um, and are natural That's and enjoyable. That's what Ree was saying, because I know Ree plays polo and she saw one around and went, that looks like, that would look like a really good polo, polo horse. Pony. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> polo pony, absolutely. yeah. No, they, they do and they adapt very well. And I think, you know, the resources, they like being on show, you know, they like people looking at them yes. and they like doing things in front of people. So, yeah. so if they've got the right temperament, the temperament kind of, and the life that they've had kind of determines what their second life is. And then that can go, you know, we've got horses that have been, here that are you know in their late twenties and we're still getting pictures of them and, oh, and people you know trace us and now you can through social media trace back you know yeah. people look 25 30 years ago and you get to hear all these amazing things that happened and we try yeah. to keep a handle on all of them you know, yeah yeah to... yeah my mum had a um I think she I, I don't know what type of racer she was but had one and she lived mum had her at a four year old she wasn't a very good racer right, right. um but lived till 35. Bloody hell. yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's a good age yeah, she had no teeth age. left and my mum right. used to have to make soup and everything right, for right, her right. but um yeah she was a lovely horse yeah, yeah. Your time they can go on a long time yeah, yeah. yeah definitely well thank you very much that's for a uh, let me ask you some questions no and for too. letting us here today it's been a privilege to um, have you here so yeah that's good. Well it's been brilliant thank okay. you very much Pleasure. so of course it wouldn't be a day out with tina without tina wanting to make a reel so uh Look out for that on Instagram. That'll be before this vlog's out, that's for sure. It'll be real good. <laughs> oh, you can use that one. If such you want a it. mum joke. <laughs> How old are you? You're the youngest of the lot. <laughs> joke with ta ah! Me and Lucy are going to fall over each other. Oh, you're going, going in the middle. Time for the sad farewell. It's been an epic morning. We've been out for lunch. We've been out for lunch. And uh, yeah, we're saying bye to Meg. Lucy is kindly dropping us to the first train station of three. And oh, we were was... so Cornish. <laughs> you know, like, you could tube to a million stations through London. It's been an absolute epic morning. And if don't forget, if you guys want to also experience this in the flesh, for your own eyes, see that the horses are treated like kings and queens, then be sure to check out the link. Again, I will pop it on screen here. If not, it will be in the description below. Nationalracehorseweek.uk and you guys can register for tickets close to you pop in your postcode and find out where your closest yard is and between the 12th and 19th of september you could be heading to a yard and again having being a fly on the wall having a little look around and seeing what goes on at that yard each yard will obviously have different setups and um, some have even got a swimming pool be sure go over have a little look and uh, you never know you might see one of us we're not quite sure where we're heading to yet but you might see one of us there and as always guys don't forget to hit the thumbs up comment and of course hit the all important subscribe button if you don't already otherwise i will see you all very soon bye